Hello, 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 and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Chama, and today we are going to continue with the Programming 101 series. So in the last episode, I said that we would talk about functions today, but I decided that it would be better to reiterate a bit about uh, variables, because that came a bit short in the last episode. So yeah, that's what we are going to do today. Um, I'm going to put myself in the bottom right corner again. And we are going straight into Visual Studio. And we're going to make a new file here and call it um, 03 variables and constants, because I'm also going to talk about constants today. And yeah, let's just start. So, what is a variable? In the last episode, I was talking about data types, and I said that a data type is pretty much two things, a representation in memory, and um, it has a behavior. And variables are focusing on that representation bit. And I'm going to make some notes here, so, well, you have some kind of agenda or list you can read through again, and I also have some points here what I talked about already. So I'm going to make a comment and a variable is pretty much a name for a piece of memory. And it's a human readable, um, like it's easier for humans to read a name than an address of a piece of memory. So with a variable, with a variable, we are giving that piece of memory which we are um, occupying with the data that is stored in it a name. So if we are making that main function again, which every C++ program needs, we have a basic syntax to make a variable, which is the data type, then the variable name, separated by a comma, then an equal sign, uh, like an equal sign for the um, initialization, and then the value. And in C++, it would be a semicolon at the end. And that's not a data tube, that's a data type. And with this name, we now have access to the data, which is stored in that variable, or in that piece of memory. So to have a real example, we just think back on the last episode and let's just say we are defining an integer value, so a number without a fraction. So we just say int and int value equals five. So there are some names uh, or some rules for the, um, for the names you can choose. Um, you can pretty much put everything in there except um, like special characters like exclamation marks and dots and um, and like ampersands. So um, if we just try some names which would be invalid, then we could say int um, say exclamation mark you go equals five and we can already see there is a like the editor gives us an uh, like an error and we can also not name them after um, the data type so if we try to name this variable int then um, that wouldn't work as well but we can obviously say int one and they can't also start with a number so they have to start with a character like a letter um, for example, if you, well, they can also start with an underscore. Um, they can take underscores as well, but you can't start them with a number. So everything is valid in terms of a letter and an underscore, but you can't start them with a number. So if we try int underscore five, that would work. And you can also chain these underscores. So let's just remove um, this one here. And with this, we have a valid variable, which is set to the value five. So you can um, 
choose to not initialize them like on the spot where you um, declare them. So you can say int value, or let's uh, I'm just choose another data type, for example, uh, float, float, float value. And that is fine as well. Like we have a variable float value now, but there is no value in there. And if we would try to print this one, for this we have to include um, the IO stream library. We can now say, um, um, like, print this to the console. And we say value is int value. That is fine because we have set that one to a value, which is five in our case. And if we are going to execute this, then we are getting a compiler value. And that is because uh, this file is still here. I'm going to exclude that one. Now it works. Um, and we, well, we have to keep the window open. So for that, we are using uh, console in. So the console waits for us to press a key. And here we say, um, we see value is five. So if we would try to access that um, float value now, I'm just going to copy paste that in here. We, well, it's fine, but um, the compiler complains that we are trying to use an uninitialized local variable float value. And that is just not possible because there's nothing in there. So even if that would work, we would get some kind of undefined behavior because we don't know what is in there. So as soon as we set a value or initialize that, that variable with a value, for example, like 1.5, believe that, um, it should work now. And there we go, um, it's 1.5. And just to um, like iterate through all the through all the different data types that I mentioned in the last episode already, we can um, just make some more variables here and choose um, a char, for example. Char value equals um, b. And we can also make a boolean value, bool value equals false. And we can print all of those as well. Now we get the B and with the bool value, we should get a zero since false is just some, um, it's just a, like an alias for uh, um, the value zero. So as you can see, these variables um, give us a way to access the data we stored by a human readable name. Um, you can also see the address of the memory directly by using the address of operator in C++, but I think this is actually something which not many languages support. Might be that C is um, C and C++ are the only ones. Um, but if we put that ampersand in front here and submit the program again, we can actually see the address of the memory where that value is stored and that would be um zero zero eight double f c eight seven um so you can see that is that would be very tedious and i'm not even sure that you can actually use the address directly i don't think so because it changes if we um submit it again it should be a different one um let's just do it again and we will see that it's a different one again um so yeah these names or variables are a way to um, get data which we stored in the memory by a human readable name and that is very comfortable for us. So yeah, and that is pretty much it already when it comes to the basics of variables. Um, so now what are constants? Well, as the name says, constants are values which cannot be changed because they are constant. 
Um, how do we define them? Well, we just add another keyword, const. And, and um, that makes this int value all of a sudden to a constant value. So um, let me just remove those three here and replace that here by int value. So we can still print this one, no problem, and we can also work with it. But as soon as we are trying to change this value, we will get a compiler error, pretty much saying that this value can't be changed because it's constant. The C++ error message here is a bit confusing, but um, the reason why this doesn't work is because as I said, this is a constant value now, so we can only set this value once in the same statement where it is um, declared, like where the variable is declared. Um, so if you're trying to do this, just defining a constant um, variable doesn't work because it needs a value in the same statement where it is defined. So we have to um, set the value here. We can just use five again. And yeah, that's pretty much it about constants as well. Um, I'm going to make some notes here. So as I said, you have some kind of list where you can work through. So again, um, the basic syntax for a variable is For a variable definition is a data type variable name equals value semicolon um, basic or oh, we can just duplicate that line basic since um, um, basic syntax for a const variable definition is const data type. Um, we also said that you can use the address of operator to get the, um, the memory piece address to retrieve the memory address, which would be, for example, um, yeah, variable name. And let's just add something else here for constants. Uh, constants can not be changed after they have been initialized. So yeah, that's it for this episode. Um, uh, the next episode will bring functions. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, then click the subscribe and like button. And yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.